I've played quite a bit of this little game and I feel like I'm just about as qualified to do a review as one might get. Now, if you've never heard about this game and you're just now exploring the store page, let's say during the sales perhaps when the game is usually around the 4 euro mark, I've got a rather simpler accommodation. If you were interested in the game just by taking a quick look on the store page, just go ahead right now and buy it. I'm pretty sure you won't regret it. Although, if you want to hear a little bit more about this game, it's pros and cons, stay here for a little longer and let us dive a little deeper into this topic. First of all, let me start off this review by saying that this game is a very, very special type of game and thus, there are not many games we can compare it with. The closest match to this game is, in my opinion, a rather old piece of game, called Wiggles or alternatively Diggles Myth of Fenris, which came out whopping 19 years ago game story was interesting, dialogues witty, and the gameplay was very unique for this time. Second most similar game would be probably Oxygen Not Included by Clay Entertainment. Needless to say, Oxygen Not Included is a way more complicated game to get into and you're gonna learn some technical stuff even though you might not really want to. With this in mind, you should turn your head to Craft the World if you want to play a lightweight, interesting and fun game. There are no complex mechanics we can observe in Oxygen Not Included, and there is also unfortunately no story or witty dialogue we loved in Wiggles. To put it simple, this game is 50% sandbox and base building, 40% tower defense and fighting, and 10% colony management. Generally, I'd say that your experience with sandbox games depends on your creativity. Some might get bored of base building right away, some might have crazy projects in their heads eagerly waiting to be realized. In any case, all the building, digging and crafting in this game is very much to my liking. There are enough blocks and there are variations to allow for a fair amount of different designs. There is also a good amount of furniture to decorate your base with, uh, although your dwarves don't really interact with most of these, which is a real shame. The tower defense part of this game is handled fairly well and all the incoming waves of enemies from portals keep you working on your defenses and constantly improving your colonies equipment to hold off the attackers. Apart from these off-world enemies, there are enemies far more powerful, waiting for you under the ground where the mighty guardians lie in wait and guard the portal parts required to advance to the next world. The last one of these points is colony management, and although you'd probably expect a strategy game where you lead your dwarf colony to victory and subsequent world domination to be more about managing your colony, it is not the case. Most of your managing tasks can be summarized into keeping your dwarves fed, well rested and most importantly alive. This game, as mentioned before, doesn't go crazy in depth with any of its aspects. It tries to keep stuff as simple as possible and I would say it works fine. That said, I can't stop dreaming about dwarf personalities being a thing, furniture interaction besides sleeping and eating, or other dwarf colonies racing you towards the plan's domination. The goal of this game, as already said, is the world domination achieved by beating the guardians, obtaining portal parts, recipes and rebuilding the portal hidden somewhere underground in each of the worlds. There's no story apart from a little pop-up messages in the beginning of the campaign. Um, quite honestly, in the 400 hours playing this game, I really didn't miss a story of any sorts. That said, there are so-called tasks, which are usually just telling you to complete certain technologies and do some basic stuff, like fortifying your house or building a railway. Uh, you can't really consider them missions, and they serve the purpose of teaching you the game or exploring some of the sandbox possibilities rather than adding anything to the story. The base game offers four different worlds along with a decision between playing through the campaign or the custom game. Campaign worlds have scaling difficulty ranging from easy to hard, making you visit four completely different worlds. While each new world changes your gameplay a bit, perhaps adding a new biome specific recipe or creating some new obstacle or a resource shortage, the general gameplay does not change drastically. I'd say it changes things up just enough to make every new world fresh and interesting, while keeping the card gameplay nearly unchanged. My personal opinion is that the fourth and final world is the most unique and interesting of them all, introducing more recipes, enemies and special map features. Custom game, as the name suggests, lets you pick your own poison and enjoy the game in the settings most suitable for you. Want a casual experience on the very easy difficulty not paying too much attention to the game while multitasking? Custom game is for you. Of course, you can approach this the other way around. 
and short play on the Nightmare difficulty with permanent death enabled, testing your abilities and quite possibly your patience with the questionable AI. Now, finally, to get into the pros and cons of this game. Pros, simplicity. Simplicity is a great factor in this game, although getting the hang of the game can take you a little while in the beginning. There are no overly complex mechanics, no electrics management, no crazy puzzles which transfers into a pretty relaxing and worry-free base building slash gameplay. Art style and audio The art style and audio are both great. The game has this cartoonish feel to it which makes it very child-friendly and all the characters are rather cute looking. Audio, especially the ambient sounds, can get pretty immersive in some locations. On the contrary, the music including Included always makes me mute it after a while. It is not bad, but it's not really my cup of tea. Sandbox. Uh, sandbox aspect of this game speaks for itself. You can do whatever you come up with as long as your dwarves will be up to task. Dig out the whole world or build a huge sky fortress. Sky is the limit, literally and figuratively. Spells. Spells are a form of your direct interaction with the world and they're essential for your success. I can't imagine this game without spells, especially the portal spell. A lot of the AI problems can be solved with your ability to left click somewhere and save your group of toddlers from imminent death. Price This game is priced very reasonably at 19 euros at the time of making this video and when the sales hit it usually gets as low as 4 euros, which is basically a steal. Steam Workshop Steam Workshop, uh, do I need to say anything about this one? Well. Maybe I do. It improves the game's DLC's policy, and to the point of it not being an issue anymore. God bless Steam Workshop. Cons AI AI is probably the only real problem in this game, which might make it seem like it's perfect, but that really is not the case. The AI ranges anywhere from good to absolutely terrible, and it's a real shame. Fortunately, there are several tools to help to counter this. The first one is a portal spell mentioned before, a real lifesaver. Then there is also the forbid dwarfs from leaving the shelter baron, which instantly makes every dwarf abandon their current occupation, whether it's crafting chair, getting stuck or running in the middle of enemy horde, and forces them to take the shortest route back home. This feature combined with the portal spell saved many, many lives of my loyal tunnelers. And last but not least. We have the scaffolding block, which improves the quality of life by 100% and makes dealing with the toddler's AI so much more bearable in a wide variety of scenarios. Starry. No Starry is a bit of a bummer, but in my opinion it isn't really that big of an issue and if you really want to leave some sort of story with a similar gameplay, I would strongly advise you to take a little look on the internet and try to get your hands on the spiritual predecessor of this game mentioned in the beginning. Vigos? or Diggles the myth of Fenris, although it is rather tedious to get running on a modern machine without staggering. DLC policy DLC policy of this game is one that can rival games like Sims and many others. A lot of quality of life improvements are parts of the DLCs only and I honestly can't imagine going back to the base game after getting used to them. Also, the pricing on the DLCs is a little steep to say the least. Fortunately, there is an option to just install a bunch of mods from the Steam Workshop to improve your experience and pay exactly 0 euros extra. Although, I still recommend you get the DLCs preferably during the sales, since the amount of content they add is huge. To name a few, you get two new unique worlds, heroes with special abilities or new challenging bosses for each world. Now, they were done with these. I feel like adding a little category just for the included multiplayer, called the questionable. The included quote unquote multiplayer works on an interesting premise of you living your single player world with a team of your dwarves teaming up with another player in an unknown dangerous world, trying to overcome its dangers and gather some riches to bring back into your single player home. As a concept, it definitely sounds good, but the problem is most of the fanbase simply want to campaign in multiplayer, which just is not an option. The DLC Dig with Friends solves this problem only partially since it has this almost single player like experience put into multi multiplayer, but there are still some differences. 
That's the reason I labeled the multiplayer as questionable, because people expecting the traditional multiplayer gameplay might get a nasty surprise waiting for them. Finally, we reached the end of this rather exhausting review and I'll once again tell you what you had already heard in the beginning. Anyone who liked this game, even before watching this, should just buy it and try it. For everyone else, I'd like to say that this game is in my opinion a great value, even for the 90 euros, and if you can handle the toddler AI, you'll most likely sink tens, if not hundreds of hours into this. And even if you do end up buying the game and not liking it, there's always the refund button. I hope this review was of any help to you, and in case you decide to buy the game, consider checking out the rest of my channel where I'll eventually upload more Craft the World content, helping people to get into the game and providing some tips, since I really, really love this game. So, this will be all for me today, and have a good one.